Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Imagine a container of pressurized gas in a locker under vacuum. If you opened it, the gas would fill the locker evenly. Then if you opened the locker in a room under vacuum, the gas would spread out evenly to fill the whole room, and so on and so forth. Now imagine starting with a lot of gas in an enormous room and releasing it into an infinite vacuum universe. What would you expect to happen? If you are a rational thinker, you might expect the gas to expand to fill the void just like it does when it was released into an empty room. If you were an astronomer, you would say that the gas acts differently and instead of spreading out, shrinks down to form a star. In the standard solar model, this is called gravitational collapse, which can be extended to include black holes and the theoretical aspects of the Big Bang. Astronomers believe that stars are created by the gravitational collapse of a gaseous mass. This was once known as Laplace's nebular hypothesis, but today is known as a solar nebular disk model. This idea stands against the known observation that gases expand to fill the void. So how does astronomy get into this mess? Cosmologists view the universe as a thermodynamically closed system, since an imaginary boundary can be placed all around the matter which was produced in the Big Bang. In our video on the kinetic theory of gases, we also use a closed system. Therefore, the fact that astronomers consider the universe closed allows the results obtained in our presentation on the kinetic theory to be applied relative to a gaseous cloud in space. For the sake of discussion, our closed gaseous cloud system is not under the gravitational influence of another system. The question is, can such a system undergo gravitational collapse? The laws of thermodynamics say no. Kinetic theory requires that the internal energy of an ideal gaseous system U was simply equal to the kinetic energy of the gas atoms in the enclosure. We also demonstrated that the total energy of the system could be raised by elevating it above the Earth. However, the internal energy of the system and its associated temperature did not change. The potential energy term arose because we had two objects attracting one another, the system of gas atoms and the Earth. However, when there is no object like the Earth acting on our system, potential energy cannot play any role. Adding potential energy to the system violates the zeroth, first, and second laws of thermodynamics. When astronomers consider gravitational collapse, they actually bring in potential gravitational energy and completely redefine internal energy of gases by making it equal to the total energy of the system. They now state that the internal energy of the system U is equal to the kinetic energy Ke plus the gravitational potential energy Pe as we had seen before. But remember, that was an equation for a gaseous system when it was interacting with another object like the Earth. You cannot use this equation within a gas itself. Still, the astronomers go on and apply what is known as the Virial Theorem, which states that the potential energy of a self-gravitating system is equal to one half of the total energy. Again, such a theory is incorrect on its face. There is no mathematical relationship between kinetic energy and potential energy in an isolated gas not influenced by another system. Still, they go forward and obtain that two times the kinetic energy of the system is equal to the negative potential energy. With a little more mathematical gymnastics, they calculate that the total potential energy of gravitation is equal to minus 3gm squared divided by 5r, where g is the universal constant of gravitation, m is the total mass of the system, and little r is the radius of the gaseous mass. You can already see that this is not reasonable, as it is impossible to ascertain the radius of a bunch of gas atoms. We already saw that the kinetic energy of a monoatomic gas is equal to 3 halves RT, where big R is the gas constant and T is the absolute temperature. So they get this equation. But now the potential energy associated with gravitation enters into the problem, and this changes absolutely everything relative to the thermodynamics of the gas. What are the consequences? 
A little rearrangement shows that a decrease in radius of the gas, little r, increases the temperature. The kinetic theory of gases, on the other hand, shows that only work on the system can be used to increase temperature. There are no external forces which can do work on our gaseous cloud in this hypothetically closed system. Therefore, the predicted increase in temperature is a violation of the first law of thermodynamics. A system cannot do work on itself. That is equivalent to creating energy. Astrophysics has built a perpetual motion machine of the first kind. In addition, work cannot be done without a heat sink, and a gravitationally collapsing mass does not emit photons into the surroundings. If a gaseous cloud could collapse and thereby decrease its entropy without doing work, that would be a violation of the second law. They have also built a perpetual motion machine of the second kind. The equation also violates the zeroth law in the definition of temperature as an intensive property. The internal energy of a gas defines temperature and it is completely unaffected by gravity. In the gravitational collapse model, temperature depends on two extensive quantities, mass and radius. Since the derivation of the top equation assumes a gas sphere of uniform density, then we could express little r in this equation in terms of mass. This shows that temperature is actually being defined by a single extensive property. That is a violation of the zeroth law and another reason why gravitational collapse is incorrect. This strange premise also leads astronomers to claim that heat capacity of a gravitating mass is negative and equal to minus 3 halves r. Recall that our equation for heat capacity C sub v is equal to delta q divided by delta t. By rearranging this equation, we see that an increase in heat leads to a decrease in temperature. There is no basis for negative heat capacity in the stars. The idea of star formation through gravitational collapse, ensuing black holes, and associated big bangs all violate the laws of physics and thermal emission. The only way out of this mess is to acknowledge that stars are condensed matter and form through condensation reactions. I hope that you enjoyed this video on gravitational collapse. If you did, leave a like. In addition, subscribe if you want to journey with me through space here at Sky Scholar. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.